Hey, what's going on, um, fellow YouTube? All right, long time no see. Man, brother been so busy, so busy, but I've been like checking everything out, so don't think that, you know, I quit or, you know, no, it's not like that, you know, no brother, you know, trying to like do things, trying to work, trying to like keep a roof over me and my old lady's head and things like that. All right, um, it's like three things that I want to like talk, talk, talk to you about. But first of all, is that it's really messed up what happened to that seven-year-old up in Florida. I think it was messed up, you know. And I don't blame his mom trying to, like, get some justice around because dude was wrong. And then what kind of, like, kind of got me was that the reporter asked his mom, his mother, was like, well, if that was your son that pulled the trigger... And, you know, it's like, why go there? I mean, and then mom said the same thing, that her son would be in jail. I said, yeah, he would be in jail or he would be dead because they would kill him on the spot if that would happen. You know, that's that's a frightening thing ever since the late 60s or the 60s when Black Panther, you seen a lot of black brothers and sisters walking around all black, you know, with a gun. That's the same thing. They see a brother walking around with a gun. That's just like a sign of a bomb about to hit, about to drop. To me, it is in my perspective. All right, the first story I want to I, I, I want to share with you, say with you guys to share, <laughs> but say is that Bobby Christina and I don't know what Oprah has something to do with this. I don't know, you know, it's it's, it's crazy. Oprah, she's kind of suffering right now. But I will say this: if Bobby Christina Brown. If you're listening, whatever, because you know, I know you, you, you're an 18-year-old young lady, young sister, so I know that you are on the computer. But I, I, I do want to say this, is that, Christina, your father loves you. Don't let nobody tell you about you or your father or anything, because your daddy loves you. Just like your mom, your dad put you in this world also. Because once Bobby Brown, your dad, Bobby's gone, you're going to miss him. You're going to miss that man while he's gone. So even though your mother's gone, but you have to try to like work things out with your dad right now. Because he's the only one that you have right now that, that you got. And people, I know media, people are also going to say that, you know, Bobby Brown this and Bobby Brown that. People got to realize that Bobby Brown was the same way when he was with New Edition on that, when they was singing Candy Girl. Mr. Telephone Man, Bobby Brown was the same way. So it's no, it's no use of changing Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown's going to be Bobby Brown. That's the reason why MCA, the record label, had kicked him out of the group New Edition. Because of his um his ways, you know, you can't, I mean, if that's something inside a brother that lives in him, it's going to stick with him. And that's something that, you know, you, you can't change Bobby. You, you can't do it. I'm sorry. Even though, you know, he has like kids from previous relationships, you know, I mean, everybody, you know, every, I mean, a man going to make a kid, whatever. I don't know what's really going on at the time when Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston was together. You know, some, it happened before he met Houston, Whitney Houston, and it was afterwards. And but and just like Brother Harvey said, I mean, he he said he said some good things. For number one, when Brother Super Harvey brother said that um, Whitney Houston, they said Chaka Khan and Jennifer Holiday was saying that. Whitney Houston was already on drugs before, you know, her and Bobby Brown got together. And you're right, Bobby Brown, I mean, Whitney Houston is a grown woman. When you're a grown person, you're supposed to, like, make your decisions of, of what you want to do. And and we and you're going to go on from there. So I don't know exactly what happened, but I would say this. If that's so, then... You people, you people can't put everything on Bobby Brown. Right now, her family, Whitney Houston's family, is making this guy, making Bobby Brown, this brother, 
seem like he, he, he's, he's, he's a bad guy. And to me, I think Bobby Brown's a cool brother. I think he is. I mean, you just can't like judge people like that. And and I would say to Sissy Houston, Whitney Houston's mother, you need to let Bobby work things out with her father. Even though you her grandmother, but Bobby Brown's her father. You didn't birth Bobby Christina. And I would say this, Bobby Christina, do not change your name. That was given to you. If you if you give that up, that's the biggest sell of, of, of all. But think about it, Bobby Christina. All right, number two. Yep, Helly Berry. Now, this was the one sisters that brothers, just like Tony Brask, Brask, Braxton at the time of the, you know, the, the um, 93, 94, like that. Brother was just like, man, you know, brother's like falling for this sister. And, you know, even though she has a white mother and a black father, but still, you know, at the time, Helly Berry was just like, you know, around, you know, Thing were brothers, you no know, Spike Lee flicks, Eddie Murphy flicks, and all that. She was like an all black flicks, like Babs and all that. And she had like previously relationships with Christopher Williams, the singer, David Justice, the baseball player at the time. He was with the um, Atlanta Braves. And then you got that one brother, I forgot his name, with the dreads. Um, I think he was with with Mint with Mint Condition. You guys know who I'm talking about. And there's some odd reason that she said that these brothers did all this stuff to her, which I kind of like, you know, that's kind of a little catchy there. I don't think all these brothers would do that. But she's saying, you know, brothers like physically, mentally, you know, abusing her. Eric Bennett, that's his name. Eric Bennett. <laughs> wow. But anyway, Eric Bennett, you know, at the time she said he was a sex dick and all this stuff. Which I, I don't kind of like believe. But anyway, you know, she left the brother and she got with this white dude. I don't know nothing about this white dude. And all of a sudden she married him and they had a kid together. And I'm sitting to myself like, damn, she had all relationship with all these brothers. Now you must remember, those three brothers was way more talented than the, the white dude she had there. But she went ahead and have, have a child by this dude right here. And all of a sudden... White dude showed his true colors, calling her a nigger, and all of a sudden, you know, she like, oh, he called me a nigger, this, 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 and that, you know? Even though the black community's like, hey, that's what you get. That's what you get. You deserve to get what you got. And, but it's one thing to this. See, in our community, you can only get a few chances, not even a couple chances, two chances. Third is a charm. I don't know about that. When that happened between Helly Berry, and I'm talking to you, Helly Berry, when that happened between you and that white dude right there, it was a kind of sense of reconciling the community. The black community was like, you know, we give her another chance or whatever. Yesterday, I was on the computer. She engaged to some Spanish dude, whatever. His last name is Martinez. Not a brother, but the same people of color, but think they white. Now, I bet you, it's going to be the same thing happen. And it wouldn't surprise me. And if, and if I, I mean, community, I wouldn't even accept Helly Berry no more. Because we found out who she really is now. I believe, to me, I believe that Helly Berry didn't, wasn't attracted to brothers in the first place. In, in order for her to say these three brothers did that to her, but she going to turn around and give birth to a child by a white dude. Now she with this guy. And you know Spanish or Mexicans, how they feel about us. You know how they feel about us. They feel the same way about us, the same as white people does. But Helly Berry, let me tell you one thing. It's going to bite your ass once again and, and and then don't be surprised is that the black community really turned their backs from you because you had a chance already now you fucked up alright now the third thing is that 
I want to say is in our community. Now I know like a lot of brothers and sisters on YouTube kind of like got on these youngsters out here, even people my age. You know, because I'm 30 years old. I was born in 1973. Is that watch out what we do, people around our community, and see what's going on and try to like improve things in our community. We said this about the youngsters and even people our age, but now the problem is, is our elders, our elders, our senior citizens. Now, don't get me wrong now, you know, the older you get, the wiser you get, as they say. And and I do listen to my elders, especially my old brothers and sisters, because, you know, they've been through hell. They've been through hell. You know, through the civil rights movement and all that, so you know, and they are children and grandchildren from our ancestries that which were slaves. But I would say like this is that it's two things. I forgot this old bro this brother name. He passed, you know, but he was like a, a civil rights leader. He said two things that was killing us is a gun and a Bible. Now, if you look at it right now how our community is right now a lot of brothers and sisters a lot of especially a lot of brothers dropping like flies why guns automatic weapons this shit and then listen to the to that crap that they listening to right now i'm gonna get on to you about that too but the thing is that what gets me is that he said two things that's a killer in the black community is a gun and a bible now you got you got the bible you got the gun right here which you know, some brothers, it's like hurting each other. And second of all is the Bible, which something that our elders in our community that can't let go. It's ironically to me is that you praying, you keep praying and praying and praying for something that is not going to happen. To me, a preacher is just like a deadbeat father. Or pres uh, a can a candidate or uh, won't vote. They ain't doing nothing but giving out broken promises. Because when you step out that church, it's the same thing. You know, you got brothers and sisters in penitentiaries right now, anywhere, any somewhere in an institutionalized. Even though they're they're not guilty, whatever, but they still praying and they more they pray is not nothing gonna happen. I remember Farrakhan once said, "How can you pray to a God that you ain't never seen?" Think about it. But it but you know what? For a prime example, this kind of reminds me of 1970 or 1979, the Jonestown massacre, when this white man, supposed to be a reverend or a preacher, whatever, he took all these brothers and sisters and sent them out in the middle of nowhere in the jungle. Cause they thought they was they thought they was being saved, even though he had white people in his congregation too. But the white people in his congregation, it was all a setup. And the thing about it is that he was planning on ki killing these brothers and sisters before they even got to Guyana. And and, and, and and you know the thing about it though, instead of this supposed to be like a utopia or something that f God or whatever, it was just like slavery. He had him in these messed up um, huts or these little houses that they built, are, uh, you know, and he did nothing but made them work, made, they, you know, had them to turn on each other. That kind of, that kind of remind you of slavery. And guess what he did? He got paranoid and, 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 and killed all of them. And what's so bad about it that these brothers and sisters, I, they said that they was drugged or whatever. But to me, it was that that they did not use their head. It was only one sister that got up and stood up to this man. And rest of them didn't do it. They, were all, they went all against her. But hey, you know, people, <laughs> people make mistakes, you know. People make mistakes. And I mean, I made a video a while ago about the rappers. And I'm gonna say it again. The Jew, the Jewish people up in the main the main media, they know what they're doing. That's the only way that they can destroy everything, destroy image or character.
of what they put out. And they doing the same thing to the rappers now. They making them say things to another rapper so they can kill each other or go to prison. Now, another thing is that how they destroying rap music is they taking these rappers. Listen, they're taking these rappers, right? Making them out of actors and stuff. So when a rapper like, like if I was a rapper, like any rapper, Ice Cube, whatever, they be actors. And all of a sudden, when they, they, they focus on doing movies instead of their music. See what I mean? So when they get far off doing these movies and stuff, they like, the hell with these, the hell with this music or whatever. But when Hollywood kicked their ass to the curb right there, all of a sudden they want to get in the studio and do another album. Which time, was five out of ten that that album is going to sink, it's, it's going to flop. It's not going to sound good. People are not going to listen to you because they consider you as a, they consider you as an actor or something like that. They don't, they not listen to your music no more. And that's when you're trying hard and hard and hard. Next thing you know, you out of a job on both ends. And it's another thing that I want to say. Thank you, brother Harvey, for, um, for what you said, because it's true. These black actors need to step their shit up. They need to step up. Because right now, just like I said before, they ain't doing nothing for us and, and never will. They not, because they only, they only care about themselves. But that's all I want to say, you know. I'm back. Hey, peace out, everybody. One love. Leo Leo 1, I'm out.